Hi everyone, welcome to Auto Shenanigans. How the devil are you? Have you had a good week? My name is John and thank you very much for joining me for another exciting episode of Motoring Oddities. Today, I'm in Cambridgeshire. Cambridge itself is of course well known for its university. Stephen Hawking, Stephen Fry and David Attenborough all once resided in Cambridge because they're all like clever and shit. It's also home to some of the biggest punts in the country. And speaking of massive punts, cyclists. We are the cyclists, the intermediate stage between humans and pure energy. According to website bikeradar.com, Cambridge tops the list as the most popular city to cycle in, reporting that 33% of residents cycle at least three or more times a week. To be fair, it's one of the flattest urban areas in the country and also boasts 80 miles of cycleways. I myself prefer a car. If you thought Lincolnshire was a flat wasteland, then feast your eyes upon the Cambridgeshire countryside. There is nothing going on at all. Animal shit everywhere. Go back a couple of hundred years, and the area I'm standing in now would have been completely submerged underwater. For you see, back then, the countryside across Cambridgeshire wasn't the flat wastelands that we have today and was made up of several meres. And what the fuck is a mere exactly? A mere is a shallow lake or large area of wetland. Your mum's a large area of wetland. Have you ever noticed that Cambridgeshire is full of dikes? Not that sort. The dikes exist because for centuries attempts have been made to drain the water away to create usable farmland. Usually you'd construct a dike and link it to a main body of water before allowing gravity to do its thing and drain the water away. However, around here where it's completely flat, that isn't an option. So back then windmills were used to pump the water around. I'm currently in a place called Whittlesea Mere on the Holm Fens. Until the water was removed, it was the largest of the meres, covering up to 3,000 square metres. The decision to drain this large area came in the 1800s, and the process ran from 1848 to 1851. By this time, they were utilising steam pumps to make draining of the water a little bit easier. And remarkably, you can still see the remains of one of these pumps today. The internet varies in opinion, but it's believed to have been installed somewhere around 1850 and was called the Blackham engine. The process mostly worked, but nobody had thought about what might happen as a result of all of this land reclamation. It turned out to be a bit of an arse. The newly created farmland flooded regularly due to sitting below sea level, and because the soil's composition was mostly peat, the land suffered severe subsidence. This subsidence didn't go unnoticed, and in 1848, a device was installed to measure the rate of land shrinkage across the area. Known as the Holmfen Post, it's a large metal post in the ground. You can still see it today, of course, alongside the largest forest of silver birch trees in the country. The reason that these are here is because in the 1880s, they decided that the land that they had created was no longer suitable for farming, so they stuck these trees in instead. So this clever device demonstrates how over the years, the land has, well, it's gone. Way up at the top there at four and a half meters is where the ground level was in 1848. Since then, it's dropped several meters down. It turns out that draining the land for farming wasn't such a good idea because it's literally disappearing. Today, there are plans to reverse the drainage of the 1800s as part of what's called the Great Fen Project. This will see the creation of 3,700 square meters of wetland, or a mere. But what has any of that got to do with roads? Well, as a result of all that crap and as demonstrated, a large portion of the Holm Fens now sits below sea level, and in places you're up to nine feet underwater, technically. England's lowest road would be an approximation, really, but it's Holm Load, where on occasion you're driving several feet below sea level. If I'm honest, it's difficult to say with some certainty which parts of the road are below sea level and which aren't. And you've also got to consider that a lot of the roads in the surrounding area are also below sea level, so it's difficult to say with absolute pinpoint accuracy which which part of the road is the lowest. However, we can say with some certainty that the Holm Fens is home to England's lowest road. If you'd like to visit the Holm Fens and England's lowest road, you'll need junction 16 off the A1, 
head towards Norman Cross and if you watched our last video you'll know that this is the start slash end of the A15, England's longest straightest road. You can check that out here. Anyway, follow the signposts towards Holm and it's a left before the village onto Holm Lode. Hotels in the area start from a very reasonable £39 per person per night and be sure to visit the Admiral Wells pub in Holm for an exquisite dining experience. That's all for today guys, thanks very much for watching. If you like this video then there's a button specifically for that and thanks for being subscribed to the channel your support's really appreciated enjoy the rest of your week whatever it is you get up to my name's john and you've been watching auto shenanigans and i shall see you next time for another exciting episode of motoring oddities until then take care bye bye but now we must go for although the lights are still red mere rules do not apply to us no!